Hey guys, we're going to talk about the Blade 700X here today. Uh, we'll go over some of the features on it and uh, get a little bit more into the details of it. Uh, we'll start it off by uh, removing the canopy. It's a lot easier to remove than uh, you know uh, the 550X and 600X. Um, we're going to start off, we have a, a new, new designed head. Um, we're using an 8mm spindle and a 12mm main shaft. Uh, eight millimeter spindle so we can get a lot larger ball bearings inside there um, so you get a lot tighter tolerances and the thrust bearings live a lot longer. Um, coming down the head we're using a uh, three millimeter links um, so the linkage rods are real beefy um, we're getting um, they're really durable um, the only time you know in a crash you'll lose them but um, other than that they're uh, super beefy. Uh, like I said, a 12 millimeter main shaft. Um, coming down, we have this new servo geometry. Um, so all the servo arms are in the correct plane of the swash plate. They're also all mounted vertically. Um, they're also all uh, mounted to the top bearing block in this middle tray. Uh, this middle block here does not have a bearing in it, but it also provides a super rigid block for the servos to mount on that is directly connected to the head. So you get really crisp cyclic. Um, we also have these new servo yoke arms. Um, so the ball is perfectly centered on the output gear so you don't get any rock on the servo arm. So you can run these plastic arms which will save your metal gear servos in a crash. Um, these are also new spectrum servos we're running here. Uh, they're high voltage, high voltage tail servo as well. They're working really good. Um, it's a new concept in the servo. So what it is is these servos are lower, um, they're a little bit lower torque than what we're used to seeing, but when it, the reason for that is the motors are, are uh, the servo motors themselves are a slower RPM than other servos out on the market, and they're sped up in the gear train. So what this does is this allows the servos to change direction very fast and very quickly. Um, that's due to the low in inertia and momentum of the servo motors themselves. So we're getting really good um, server performance out of the servos as well as really low current draw. Um, these servos are really efficient because they're not overworking now. Um, on a HV setup for a four minute flight, I'm only pulling about 150 milliamps out of my receiver battery on this. So that's really nice and uh, you know you can run a lot smaller receiver batteries now. So keeping the setup light. Uh, going down from there, uh, we have a 131 tooth Mod 1 helical main gear. Um, it's 15 millimeters thick, so it's super um, durable. I have not taken one out even in development, um, so I'm really happy with the performance of it. Uh, then down to that, we're having a 118 tooth uh, Mod 1 um, auto rotation gear, which is 8 millimeters thick, working really well. Uh, coming on to the forward, we have a new motor. Uh, this is our new uh, 700 motor. Um, it's 520 kV, so the power band is right and is perfect for this gear ratio. Um, it's going to come with 6.5 millimeter bullets pre soldered on the motor. Um, and what you're seeing here is the combo version. So there's no ESC here. Um, I'm able to run a Castle 120 HV on this, which is what I've normally been running. Um, nice thing is since the motor's in the correct power band, I'm not having any overheating issues, so I can get away with a 120. Um, a lot of the motors now, um, you know, in the helicopters are having to run 160, so it's nice I can keep a light set up and you know, a little bit cheaper on the ESC. Uh, below here, uh, I have the AR7200BX from Spectrum. Um, the mounting tray is plastic. Um, you can also mount it on the back, back here above the tail case. Um, I like it up front because then if I have to take the tail boom off or anything, it's, you know, I don't have to redo the wiring or anything. Um, that's just personal preference. So if you don't take, you know, the tail case out a lot or anything, uh, for traveling, I take it off. So it's kind of nice. Mm -hmm. I don't have to worry about it now. Um, also on these servos, they, the wires unplug from the servos as well. So the nice thing is, you know, if you take out a servo or, you know, you need to work on it, you can unplug the wire, take the four screws out, pop the ball link off, and you can have the whole servo out of the model and you're good to go then. Um, we'll go down to the battery tray. Uh, nice thing is it's a removable battery tray, so batteries come out really easily. Uh, just this one spring clip here. Um, you know, nice thing is if you have multiple sets of batteries, 
Or if you know you have a 550 that runs 16S5000, you know you don't have to worry about milk running the batteries in inside the model. Um, so that goes on really nice, um, really easy. Keeps everything you know quick and easy at the field. Uh, we'll go on back to the back here. Uh, we have a plastic tail case up front. Um, the flat jack shaft gear and the front bevel gear are pinned on the shaft, and then a set screw goes down in through the shaft. Um, very similar to other brands out there. Um, nice thing is, so you can buy those gears. They come in a pack of two. You can have spares. You know, really easy. Don't have to worry about you know having carrying around a bunch of you know a big jack shaft gear and all that stuff. Also, you can shim the gears up and down. Uh, it's a five millimeter shaft, so any five millimeter shims will work. So you can set your gear mesh so it gets perfect. Um, going back here, we have the rudder servo. Just like the cyclic servos, it has the plug. Um, it's HV, like I said. It uses the same yoke arm, um, so all the servo arms are the same on this model. It is torque tube. Um, chose torque tube for its efficiency, and also, um, you know, you can run. You don't have to have a super large boom, so you can keep everything light in the back. Um, we do have a one-piece horizontal fin mount and clamp. Um, really cool design on this one is this bolt is. Uh, goes through and actually does the clamping and then it's a short bolt on this side so you don't have an extra bolt for the clamping um, makes it really nice um, the boom supports are carbon fiber uh, back to the back here we have a one piece tail hub uh, tail case rear tail case um, this top screw just holds the fin on and then this bottom screw actually also does the clamping for the tail case and also there's two small button head screws here that also pin the boom um, so it's pinned in the front and the back, so that way you don't get any twist. Um, and you know, even if the clamp does come loose, you're not going to eject it off. We'll move back. Uh, this tail gear right here, just like the front tail gears, it's pinned and then set screwed. Um, the gear, the tail shaft is six millimeters, so um, you know you can set your gear mesh here a little bit too, so you can shim it if need be. Uh, shouldn't have to shim them, but you never know. Um, tail shaft six millimeters all the way through. Um, nice thing is here on the tail um, tail bell crank mount, it's offset slightly, so you can take off the mount without taking the bell crank off, which is really nice. Um, you know, just really simple. Uh, it is a uh, two fork uh, bell crank, so you get a really nice clean uh, tail performance. Um, it's plastic on metal here, so you get really nice wear. You know, um, wear in the lifespan, so you don't get a lot of slot buildup. Uh, the tail grips um, are metal. They're also uh, a little bit different design. Um, so all the bearings come in from the outside. So it's a stack of bearings. It's radial thrust radial. So it's a little bit different. So this in and out plate is supposed to be there on the tail grips. Uh, it gets a lot, rid of a lot of resonance and hums and tail hubs. Um, so the tail grips can balance perfectly. Uh, we're running 115 millimeter tail blades. Uh, we're running a little bit lower tail gear ratio than what's out there right now. We're at 4.55, so you got to run the bigger tail blades, uh, but you still get really good tail performance. Uh, we'll come back up here to the frame. Uh, we do have one-piece landing gear, so that's really nice. In a crash, four screws, you can replace the whole landing gear. Um, that's pretty much it. You know, it's a really simple frame layout, uh, not a lot of parts, um, and that's kind of nice on, you know, a helicopter this size, you know, you can repair it quickly. It holds up really nicely, and you know that's what you know what we really want. Uh, we'll go over here uh, to the option part, which I think is really cool and kind of you know it's, it's a little different, and you're not you don't see a lot of them out there right now, but it's really uh, fun to play with. Uh, this is a three-bladed head. Nice thing is it uses the same blade grips and arms, um, so your spare parts are the same there. Same fly barless links, so that's the same part there, which makes it really nice. Um, so you, when you get the conversion, you have the, the hub here, and you get the, the extra blade grip. Um, washout arms the same. All that comes different is you have to change the upper swash on here. So four screws come off, and you can change the upper piece on your swash plate. And then you just put it on. You don't have to do any special settings in your fly barrels unit um, since we took care of the um, basically the phasing and the head right there. 
Um, so it's just really cool performance. I like the three-bladed head. It's a little bit different. Uh, it's got a really cool sound to it. Um, it does decrease your flight time a little bit for doing 3D, but um, for you know just sport flying and that kind of thing, it's really fun to play with. Um, so that's that. And then, uh, like I said, we have our uh, fiberglass canopy here. Um, really lightweight, and uh, I really like the paint scheme on it. It's really visible, uh, you know, yellow on the bottom. Really easy to tell when your nose in, that kind of stuff, or, you know, skids in. Um, so, that kind of thing. So, that's pretty much it. Um, hope you guys like it. Uh, and we'll see you out there at the field.